Hello, and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Verana, and today is a great day, because today we are finally getting to a topic where I had the honor to lead that project for a couple of years. We are getting to ultrasonic computer tomography, to SAF, to a synthetic approach of focusing technique. Now, you might have heard the SAFT is a good imaging technology. And that's true. SAFT is a very powerful imaging technology, just like TFM. But SAFT can be more. SAFT can be a full-blown quantitative NDT or NDE method. And that's what this video is about. That's what this project was about. Now, but before we get going, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Don't forget to watch the video all the way to the end because that's how YouTube works. And that's how we can make this channel and NDE at all more visible to the world outside of NDE. Now let's get going with quantitative SAFT. So, what I will be showing you is really, yeah, we did the development of a quantitative SAFT for a certain component, for a certain problem. And that's the inspection of large rotor forgings for gas turbines. And here you can see such forgings right next to the younger version of myself. And you can see how huge those are. They have about two meters in diameter. They are about that thick. They weigh about five to 10 tons easily. And it takes about 20 of them to build one gas turbine. And then you rotate them with 3000 to 3600 RPM, depending whether it's a 50 or a 60 Hertz gas turbine. So you can see the load that you are seeing. And on top, they also see, yeah, the air which comes in, that's about, that can be about zero degrees Celsius. And then once we reach some very determined section, we have an airflow of about, let's say, 1,400, 1,500 degrees C. So you, you see the load those fortunes see. And I guess you can immediately see why NDE or NDT on those fortunes is a huge part of the quality assurance. Now, what is done on such forgings? Yeah, they are inspected automatically with ultrasonics. And usually, when we're doing a classical NDE inspection, we're doing about 10 different scans. We're using inspection from the OD, we are doing inspection from the faces, we're using angle probes, we're using pitch catch uh, probes, all what you can imagine to have a really high quality level of those forgings. It takes about eight hours to do the inspection. And typically, we are looking for indications in the size of about 0.7 to 2 millimeters or bigger. Now, if you want to know more about a classic automated inspection, I have done a video about automated inspection in the past. And I will leave a link to that video right here. Now, to give you a little bit more background on what a fracture mechanics specialist is doing with those numbers, doing with the results of NDE, we have to take one, steps, one step towards, yeah, our fracture mechanics specialists. Now, the next slide, it will be perhaps a little bit challenging, but try to stay with me. It only takes a couple of you know, one or two minutes to get you through that slide, and then we will get back to the NDE stuff you want to know. So, if you want to calculate the lifetime of such a forging, what do you do? You have your certain design. You optimize that design. You have certain 
boundary condition, mechanical and thermal boundary conditions. All that leads to certain stresses and temperatures. You have a certain material. And you can put all of that into a calculation. You also have to take into account imperfections, which are in the material. And that's really easy. If we find an indication with ultrasonic testing, then we can say, okay, we have an indication with a certain size at a certain location with a certain orientation. And they can put that directly into their calculation and then they can directly calculate the lifetime. But what if we, as the NDT guys, didn't find any indication? In that, guy, in that case, yeah, what a fracture mechanic specialist needs to do is we have a certain sensitivity. So we know that if we would have an indication above that sensitivity, we would have seen it. So therefore, there is no indication above the sensitivity in the component. That's what we know. But we do not know if there is an indication below sensitivity in the component. And we cannot say at all. So what the fracture mechanic specialist has to do, he has to assume that an indication is in the component from, a, from the size, it has the size of the sensitivity because that's the worst, he has to assume the worst case. And the worst case is the size of the end indication is the same as our sensitivity. And he has to assume it is at the worst location and the worst orientation. And that's what he is putting into the lifetime calculation. Okay, so far so good. But now what does that mean for our sensitivity? And by the way, if you want to know more about the topic of sensitivity, I've also done a video about that topic and you find that link right here. Now, what it means is that if I am able to achieve a better sensitivity, then I actually can reduce that indication I'm putting into the fracture mechanics calculations. And therefore, I will be able to allow a longer lifetime for that component. So the longer, lower the sensitivity, the higher the lifetime. And you can easily imagine that this is a really good business case. And that was exactly what our customer, the design engineers were looking for. So we started looking for yeah, possibilities. How can we improve the sensitivities? There are several ways of doing it, but there was really one which stuck to our eyes and which at the end really became a really successful one. And that was synthetic focusing. So focusing done by analytics, by, st by calculations. And what we do with SAFT is yeah, or what we do with classic inspection. We have our probe, we have a certain sound bundle, and then, yeah, right here, we have here this area. And within that area, all the noise or all the grain we have in that area will add up to our noise level. If we do synthetic focusing, yeah, then we actually go down to just one small volumetric element, one small voxel, and we only add up all the grain within that small voxel, which means that our noise level actually is reduced by a lot. And if you really want to get into the details, because that is the grain noise we are reducing, we are also reducing the so-called, yeah, or the noise coming from our environment, our statistical noise, because SAFT is kind of an intelligent, averaging technology. Yeah, if you want to know more about the basics of SAFT, yeah, then look here, because I've also done a video about the basics of SAFT. But now let's get more into the quantitative aspect. So what we do is for every single volumetric, or we collect the high frequency ultrasonic data from going all around the component, from 
all our different angles and scans we are doing. And for every single volumetric element, we add up kind of all our different signals we have at that location. Now that technology is not new. It goes back to yeah, 1967 with synthetic aperture radar and a lot of steps in between also for ultrasonics. But in our eyes, the big step was in 2006. And Werner Heinrich had the idea to use this technology for the improvement of our sensitivity for the large rotor forgings, for everyday inspections, for cereals production. And that's really the big step we took. And what was the result? Yeah, the result is here you can see the result of our classic ultrasonic inspection on the one side, and on the other side we can see the result of SAFT. And if we compare that background noise we have, yeah, in the classic UT we see a lot of noise, and in SAFT, yeah, all of that noise is gone. So we can immediately see how much the sensitivity has improved. For sure, number two, we can also see how much the spatial resolution has improved. But let's wait a second if that is ready enough to for the whole measurement point. Let's step one step back. Let's get to, yeah, how do we do size measurement using classical UT? What we do, we find an indication and then we go, okay, here it has reduced my minus 6 to be, here it has reduced my minus 6 to be, and that's the length, and that's the size of our indication. Now you can immediately see the size we are getting here, which is clearly way bigger than the 0 0.7 to 1 millimeter we were talking about. And that's caused that we have a huge beam diameter at the size of our indication. So probe travel is really only usable for indications which are larger than our beam diameter. And in our case, we are clearly smaller. So what do we have to do on our classic UT on those rotor forgings? Yeah, we're using a amplitude-based sizing like DGS or DAC. And I've done a video actually on DGS on a DAC a while ago, and I will leave the link to that video right here. And both DGS and DAC have a huge benefit. We can number one, size the indication, size those tiny indications, and number two, it also allows to determine the sensitivity of our inspection. So we can say, okay, that noise level we have, we add those 6 dB, and then we can say, okay, our noise level or our sensitivity is equivalent to an 0.7 millimeter disc shaped reflector. So now let's go. So we, so kind of to summarize, for classical sizing, we have those two methods. We have the probe travel and we have the amplitude based sizing. Now, if we go to SAFT, what we do in SAFT, we have here the, the this reconstruction, we clearly see the indications we have. And that's kind of the situation we had in 2006, served as an imaging tool. So what we did for, yeah, actually getting the size of those indications was counting the volumetric elements. However, if we look into the resolution we can achieve with soft, because the resolution of SAFT is also not indefinite. It's way better than classic, which we can immediately see. But here at the center, yeah, at the center, we can reach up to about 0.7. But at the OD, we only can reach about five millimeters. And we are looking for indications of the size of more, yeah, 0.7 or even 0.5 millimeters. So that resolution, of that imaging technology is clearly not good enough. So back in 2006, we were facing two major challenges. 
how to measure the size of the indications which are smaller than the resolution of theft, and number two, how to determine the sensitivity. Because that's really what our fracture mechanics colleagues need. They need to know, okay, what is the sensitivity we can achieve so that they can then put that sensitivity into their calculations. So, and then came the big idea of Werner Heinrich. So, to use something like DGS. So, if we think back to the classic UT, we had number one, the sizing by trope travel, and number two, the sizing by the amplitude. With SAFT, we have on the one side, we have the imaging, which is kind of the probe travel, and then to add something which is based on the amplitude information. And back in those days, he called that DGS SAFT. And that technology was implemented. And implemented in a way so that every yeah, volumetric element is now has now a certain, that we are now comparing that amplitude sum of a certain element with an amplitude sum of a simulation. And we can directly say, go with our mouse to a certain element and say, okay, that indication has a size of 0.98 millimeters. Unfortunately, that calculation isn't as easy as a DGS diagram. It's really for each individual forging, that calculation has to be done before we can actually start the inspection. And it takes a couple of hours to do that calculation or a couple of minutes. So what we do, we know the size of the component, we start the inspection, the computer at the same time starts with calculating that DGS matrix or that soft DGS matrix. And once the inspection is done, once the SAFT reconstruction is done, then we can directly go and compare all our volumetric elements with the results of our simulation and directly give you the information in millimeter KSR. And you can not only do that with that indication, you can also do that with the noise. You can go with your mouse cursor on noise and see, okay, how high is the noise level in millimeter KSR or in millimeter flat bottom hole. So, I guess now you can see on classic UT, what, made, what really made UT a NDT method, a complete NDT method, was on the one side the sizing with the probe travel, and on the other side using the amplitude information to give you something about those small indications with also giving you a sensitivity. With SAFT, we now have the same situation. We have on the one side this fantastic imaging technology, and on the other side we have this DGS SAFT or QSAFT, which is giving us for every single voxel also a size information. How big is that indication? And now perhaps you want to know how much we were able to improve our sensitivity about a factor of five. Classic UT, we had a sensitivity of about one millimeter. SAFT, we had a sensitivity about 0.2 millimeters. That's how crazy the improvement is. And for the imaging, for sure, for lateral sizing, we also had about a sensitivity improvement of about a factor of 10. And this project was also then, yeah, awarded by DG ZFP for the uh, application award 2019. And this is a picture of the awards ceremony. And you can see Werner Heinrich, he is, um, yeah, standing right here, the second to the right. Uh, to his right, that's Hubert Moshofer. Hubert, he was doing most of this fantastic coding work for this project, so without him, all of this wouldn't have worked. And all the way to the left, you see myself and Karsten Kalk. Um, the two of us, we were kind of splitting the yeah, project lead work on this project. And yeah, in my eyes, it was really successful work. 
And I think Siemens Energy gained a lot from this project, gained a lot of lifetime for their, their gas turbines. So I think it was an overall success. And also from an application standpoint, we also had um, Sarschmiede and some other forging suppliers with us. And I think for them, it also became a really good experience using the SAF technology because it actually, it's kind of, once we were down the road of all the development, it's kind of an easy to use technology, which brings those huge benefits. There was also a video, which was called the transparent shaft, which was done by Siemens to show, yeah, the development we have done. And I will leave a link to that video also right here. And we have written several papers. This is the first one we published. That one was published in Steel Research 428. And we did a second one, which was actually published in the uh, ZFP Journal of the German Society. So it's only available in German. And we'll put the link in the video description. And only in parentheses, because it was actually also translated to Russian. And I will also leave a link to that Russian paper, uh, which was published, I think, in ND2 World, that channel is called. So, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down here in the comment section. Next time, I will get to the next fascinating topic. So by now we have talked about SAFT, which is one probe sending the information, going back, moving the part, and then doing the next, and then doing a reconstruction of all those different signals we have. With TFM, we are going the next step. We're using a phased array probe. We're shooting with one element from receiving with all the other, and then doing a reconstruction. And you will see what's really the difference between SAFT and TFM. As usual, you will find more information in the description. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope I will see you soon. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Buy our book. Thank you and bye.